Hey everybody, it's Femtrooper, and today I'm going to be showing you all the games I beat in 2022. Yes, I realize it's February now. Talking about 2022 is a little passe, but I had a really busy January and I'm getting these out, so yeah. I want to share all the games that I beat in 2022 which, that number is 20. I beat 20 games in 2022. I am beyond stoked. I'm so happy because that's the most games I've ever beat in a year. It's, it's 20, so that's a really big deal for me. So let's just dive right in and I'll show you every game I beat in 2022. First up, we have 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. And I would have preferred to play this on the Switch, but unfortunately the Switch version hadn't come out yet. And I had already, you know, bought this. So this is really good. This is a great game. Some people say it's one of the best games ever made. I've the, the praise for this game is sort of unreal to me. It's a bit much. It didn't do it for me the way it did it for other people. Now, chances are you're going to play this and your mind is going to be blown because almost everyone I talk to who plays this game seems to just put it on a pedestal like it's the best thing Ever. And it just didn't blow my mind personally. I found it a little convoluted and yeah, I know that it is because it's one of those things that, you know, kind of doesn't make sense until the end. But I just found that it was like every sci-fi trope thrown in one game and while that's cool, I would have preferred maybe fewer characters and just, I don't know. It just, it just wasn't, it wasn't an amazing game for me, but I would say it's a really good game. So the fact that I'm still able to hold it and show you says something because I only get rid of games I don't like. So I did like it. It just, it was not like, it wasn't a favorite of mine. Next up we have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and this is actually fantastic. I always have something negative to say about a Pokemon game. Almost always because I love it so much that I really... If it's not a certain way or a certain type of thing for me, then I'm just, you know, you lose me. So um, I'm very particular with my Pokemon games. But this one was fantastic. I did play the original, like Pokemon Diamond, a long time ago. But it was, I was in my 20s and it just wasn't, um, I don't really have nostalgia for it the way I have with, like, say, Pokemon Blue. So I didn't really remember a lot and I kind of just went in fresh. And it was honestly, it was just a really fun time. I love the chibi style. I thought it was, you know, actually really cute and it wasn't trying to be something it wasn't. It was just a very, very traditional Pokemon game with quality of life um, upgrades and I thought it was fantastic. So I highly recommend, um, you know, Pearl and Diamond, like, um, for the Switch versions, really, really good. If you like Pokemon, you like the old school ones, then definitely give these a shot. The next game is one that I unfortunately don't have anymore because I traded it in because I just didn't really care for it, and that's Code Realized Guardian of Rebirth. This is an Otome game, just not for me. I, I, I had played one Otome game before and I actually really liked it, it was really fun. This one though didn't really jive with me so much, I just, it wasn't for me. It was just a little bit boring, it took a long time, I felt it to be a bit of a slog. I did get through it, I got all the endings, but I just, just because I had to, but I, I just, it just wasn't for me. I'm starting to debate whether or not Otome games are my thing. I don't know. I want to give a few more a shot and then I'll probably know at that point, but Code Realize, I just didn't care for it. I'm sorry to say if it makes me a weirdo, but it just wasn't smutty enough. It wasn't, there wasn't enough like romance and it just, I don't know. I was just like, eh, no, not for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, the next game now is also a game I don't have anymore because I just didn't like it. And I thought, why keep it? I don't like it. I did beat it, but I, I don't need to have it anymore. I'd rather get something else I do like um, to keep. And that is Pokemon Legends Arceus. I really, truly, legitimately hated it. I found it so, 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 so boring. It was literally just catching Pokemon. There's almost no story. It's just wandering around. It's very blah looking in the graphics department. That usually doesn't bother me, but I'll find anything, you know, if I don't like this and this and this, then I'll, I'll, I'll nitpick at the graphics. So yeah, like really boring stuff, guys. I know a lot of people who aren't into the mainline Pokemon games did like it and they thought, 
yeah, like, you know, this is for me because I'm not into the others. But I am into those and this was not like that. You know, I like exploration. I like going from town to town and, you know, getting my gym badge and I don't know. And this was obviously not that. You're just wandering around, filling up a Pokedex. When I play Pokemon games, I actually don't tend to catch that many Pokemon because I just don't care. So this was like not made for me at all. And I just found it incredibly boring. This was such a slog. It's unbelievable. I did stick it out and I beat it, but yeah, not, not my thing at all. So yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will be disappointed by hearing that, but I absolutely hated it. <laughs> The good thing is, the game I beat right after that is one of my favorite games of all time. Like, so high, it's like in my top three or whatever. Like, it's really, really high. I, huge praise for this game, and that is Yakuza Like a Dragon. Oh my gosh, this is one of the best games ever made. I would talk about it all day. It has the most likable characters. It's emotional. It's, it's incredibly heartfelt. It has amazing music. The battle system is super fun. It's great turn-based combat. It's fun because it's in modern day J Japan. I love that. He references Dragon Quest constantly, so it really has an earthbound Dragon Quest vibe in it. Everything from even, I mean, Yaku Yakuza, Yakuza, whatever, is really like that. I mean, even the way the, the sounds when text scroll, like it's just, it's made for me. I love Yakuza, I love Dragon Quest, I love earthbound and this is all of that um, kind of in one. Like, I don't want to say it's a modern day Earthbound because it's not, um, but Dragon Quest and Earthbound are very similar and it has that vibe and it is modern day. So it's kind of like, if you like those things, you'll probably like this. And obviously if you like Yakuza, you will love this. It is fantastic. The characters are in their forties. Like it's so much different, so much, honestly, it's very creative. So much cre creativity went into this. I just feel like I can't, I am beyond excited for a sequel. It's going to be fantastic. This is one of the best games I've ever played. So after playing Pokemon Legends Arceus and being really, really just let down and upset that I was even spending my time playing it, this just made my day. So 100% recommend. This is one of the coolest games ever. I know there's a free upgrade for PS5. Um, I didn't have a PS5 at the time, but um, this is like a must. It's a must own for anybody who likes JRPGs. Next, we have a game that was a surprise for me because I had never actually played a Kirby game before, and that is Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Uh, what a really, really great game. A fantastic platformer. This is the kind of game that kind of made me feel like I was back in elementary school playing like Banjo-Kazooie or Super Mario 64 or any of those kind of style games. It really gave off that vibe, like super fun. It really, like I just thought, man, if I was like, you know, nine years old right now, I would have just absolutely loved this. Like just really like, you know, got into it. And I did now, I just loved it. It was such a fun game, 100% recommend. Uh, I'd never played Kirby before. I've always, in my head, Kirby is like a slower paced platformer, like Yoshi, and I, I don't know, like I'm probably so wrong, and this was like really, really good. If you like any of those open world sort of 3D game, um, I don't want to say open world, because that's wrong. It's not open world. It's not quite like that, but it gives off, you know, Super Mario 64. It's almost like 3D world meets like Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, you know, meets Super Lucky's Tale, like those kind of style games. Absolutely fun. It's linear. It's not too open, but it's just incredible. What a, what a fantastic game. Really good soundtrack. Um, nothing but good things to say. I just loved this. Next is a game that is an indie title and it's called Bug Fables, The Everlasting Sapling. And it's very much a love letter to the original Paper Mario game. And it's really good, but it could be better. So this is more like, this is like a seven and a half out of 10 kind of game for me where it's like is just like like it could have been just a little better and I think for me um it was just lacking a little bit in the story department like I just I didn't connect with some of the characters and the story as much as I had wanted to but it's really solid so I actually still recommend this it's a really good game oh my god does it look gorgeous uh, I love the towns and the exploration aspect like really cool very creative it's very different uh but I just didn't um, connect with it the way I wanted to, like I did with some other games, like like Yakuza Like a Dragon, like that game, you know, oh my god, like I just, I fell in love with everybody, versus this one, I, I wasn't as in love with the characters, but it is a really cool game. It can be a little tedious because it has some sort of 
I know I hate it when they add like platforming stuff in JRPGs. I just hate it, but it is turn-based combat. There's a few platforming segments that and puzzles that might drive you nuts, but I mean, nothing a little internet and uh, Google can't fix. More surprises here because this is a game that I had completely thrown out the window and was like, I'm never playing that. Ew. And then I tried the demo and I was like, Whoa, I am playing that, and it's Triangle Strategy, one of my favorite games of 2022 in terms of releases, and also uh, just a favorite JRPG now. This is one of my favorite Switch games. Really good. Uh, it blew me away because I thought the story was just absolutely incredible. Super cool because you always have choices to make, and it really does affect the outcome. You can get a different ending than somebody else, like completely different, and you really, really felt like, oh man, and the decisions were like, they're not like little ones, they're like really big deals, like like a huge decision you'd have to make constantly. So really, like what a fun game, really cool. I liked, I liked everything about it, honestly. It's gorgeous, the music is really beautiful, and the story is actually top notch. And if you're, like I said, I'll say this every time, if you thought Octopath Traveler was a little boring, um, this is not like that. It's, I know that's why I was turned off because I thought, ooh, I, Octopath Traveler, Traveler was really boring. This is not boring at all. This is really interesting and I highly recommend it. And it's a great SRPG and I suck at SRPGs. There are difficulty settings so you can suck and still have a great time. Next we have a game that only takes like an hour and a half to beat but it counts and so that is Sayonara Wild Hearts. I would say this is more of an experience kind of game because it's just, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like a rhythm game, but it's not, and you're kind of experiencing something. It's, it's like, I, I, that's a terrible way to describe it, but it really is just an experience. It really is. It's like, you just put it on and you're just there. You're just, you're just in this for like an hour and a half and then it's done. And it is really cool. I do recommend it. I don't know if I would buy it physically, like maybe don't spend the money to do that. I didn't spend that much money on it. I think it was like 20 bucks, but I mean, if you can buy it for like $4 online, maybe just do that. I don't know if it's worth owning. I don't know. Like, it didn't blow my mind at all. I know some people like really think this is one of the coolest games ever. Not for me. It was okay. Um, some of the songs are really cool. It's definitely like neat, but it just, it didn't blow me away like I thought it was going to. I thought, oh my God, like it's going to be this, these two hours of insanity and it, it wasn't. So it's okay. I just... Yeah. Next up, we have Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, finally got around to playing this, and it is really, really good. Obviously, it's very similar to just, you know, Marvel's Spider-Man. Very short. This is maybe, I don't know if it's like half the time. Like, if this is like a 10-hour game versus the other one, maybe it was like 20. I, I don't know. It's it's not very long. Like, you're, this is maybe like eight hours or something. But it's really worth it. Like, great story, it visually it looks great, and it's just a really fun time. So if you like action, you know, action adventure, superhero kind of games, or you really liked the the original Spider-Man game, then definitely get this. This makes me very hyped for Spider-Man 2 that I think is coming out this year, at least I hope it is. If it is, that's fantastic. But yeah, really cool. I really like Miles Morales, actually. He's a great Spider-Man. It's kind of neat how we have two Spider-Mans now. Like, I, I'm all for it. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, so, uh, you know, Peter Parker is my Spider-Man, but Miles Morales is great. Like, I love his storyline. I love everything about it, and this was really compelling. There's definitely some emotional moments in here, and it's definitely great, and I don't think this is that expensive, so if you miss this somehow or whatever, and, or get the PS5 version, whatever, it's really, really good. Next, we have a sort of Metroidvania game that is a platformer that I like and don't like and it's Shantae and the Seven Sirens. Shantae is amazing in a lot of ways. Gorgeous. I mean, God, the graphics are so cute and great and they look so polished and clean and the music is amazing. It's so much fun. I love playing it, but I'm not really a Metroidvania fan and I don't know why I thought I would like this, but it's not really my style of game. I like platformers where there are levels, you get from A to B, you clear it, it's done. And then you have a world map of like six levels or something and then there's a like a boss. That's my style of platforming, very much like Donkey Kong Country, that kind of thing. This is not, it's like a giant map that you explore. You have to do, go back and forth, maybe you have to go back down here to get this item for this. Like, it's not really the platforming experience I want. 
I'm an idiot for not really doing my research and not knowing enough about Shantae. I think it's because I played a Vita Shantae and it was a little bit different. It wasn't quite the same. I don't know, whatever. And so I was really excited about this, but it's just not really for me. So I would say this is actually fantastic if that's your thing, but if it's not and you're more like me and you really just want to play like Donkey Kong Country or like Super Mario Brothers, then maybe stay away from this. If it's not your thing, like you're not really into like Castlevania or like Metroid, that kind of stuff, maybe don't play this. But yeah, not uh, a favorite of mine, but it's definitely like I would still say if you're into it, then you, you should check this out. It is actually really well done. I try really hard every year to play at least one Dragon Quest game. And so last year I chose Dragon Quest IV and fantastic. It's great. It's really, really solid. It's, um, you know, I don't know. I, I would still probably place Dragon Quest V higher, but Dragon Quest IV was really good. I liked how you played different storylines and then everybody joined up at the end. That was really cool. I really enjoyed it. It's Dragon Quest, so kind of no matter what, I'm going to like it. I'm not that picky with Dragon Quest. Like, it's a feeling for me, and Dragon Quest always gives a good feeling. So even if it's like, like, is this the best story in gaming? Like, absolutely not. Like, it's good, but it's not, like, gonna blow your mind. But the game is just so much fun. It's like eating a box of craft Dinner. That's what Dragon Quest is. Up next, we have another new release, and that is AI The Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. And great, this is fantastic. I still like the first one better, but this was really good. This was top notch, had great new characters. Uh, there are still characters from the old ones that made appearance appearances and were in it, and it was a lot of fun. I think I still like the gameplay and the story better in the first one, but I really did like this one. Some great songs in it, and just a really, really fun time. I I don't really know what else to say. If you like like creepy, weird murder mystery like waifu games, I don't know. It's great. It's fantastic. It is a lot of fun. It's just. I do find that like I, the, the gameplay in this is is a little bit much for me like I'm not a puzzle person so it's you know if you're that kind of bugs you you may not enjoy it but if you like Zero Escape like 999 because it's the same guy who does these you have to play the first one you, you have to play the first one first uh, just play AI the Somnium Files it's great and then absolutely play this highly recommended like I had a great time uh, but I still do like the first one just a little better but um, yeah, fantastic. Great experience. Next, we have a game that I beat very fast considering it's a long game, and that is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I finally beat it. A big reason I wanted to play it was at the time Xenoblade Chronicles 3 had just come out, and I thought, I better get to 2. I know it doesn't matter, like, you can play them out of order, but I just thought, no, let me just play the second one, and then I'll get it done. I really was hesitant. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to like it. I get a weird vibe, but I played it with Japanese voice, voice um, like Japanese audio, and it that helped. And honestly, this was a fantastic experience. I highly recommend it. I really like this. Does it have major issues? Yes, there are so many issues with this game that made me mad. And yeah, but overall, I'd still recommend it. It's solid. It was a fun JRPG experience, and I just had a great time. The next game is another game. Unfortunately, I don't have it anymore because I traded it in actually just recently, like maybe a couple weeks ago, because I was like, I hate this game. I don't need to have it on my shelf anymore. And I'm, I know a lot of people liked it, but it's Digimon Survive. I did not like it at all. I'm not one of those people who didn't know what it was. I'm very aware what it was, okay? Like I like visual novels. I knew that it was like 90% visual novel and like 10% SRPG. I was very aware of that. So yes, take that into account. Cause I know some people bought it and they were just disappointed cause they, their expectations weren't met. For me, it was just, I found it just really boring. I honestly found it super boring. Like it was just not that interesting. And unfortunately it had some really cool, creepy undertones. And I will say it's pretty dark for Digimon. Like I didn't, you know, a lot of people think Digimon is sort of like a Pokemon thing and it's very young and people were straight up dying in it all the time. And I was like, well, that's, I want to say that's cool. But in a way it was like, kind of had that creepy Danganronpa vibe. And I thought, okay, this is getting like kind of weird, but then it just wasn't weird enough for me. It was just, 
really, and it would take a long time for something cool to happen or something crazy to happen. It was just a slog, and I, I found it pretty painful to get through. I actually liked the combat in it. It was really basic and simple, but because it was an SRBG, like, I enjoyed it. It was fun, and, and there are there are positives to Digimon Survive, for sure. I just, it's not, it really, like, for me... As you know, gaming is very much a feeling, and same thing with movies, like it's a feeling. Does that movie evoke an amazing feeling? Do you think, yes, when you think about it? And like, I don't. I think so many no's, and I'm very upset when I think about it. So it's like, that game is gown. So it is gone, and uh, traded it in basically with a few other games and, and got Fire Emblem engaged for free. So, you know, whatever. Like, I do not, like, I just didn't want it anymore. Not my thing. Thankfully, the next game I beat was actually pretty good and kind of a surprise because it looks kind of like some cheapy game that you would like see at Walmart with like just like a 1999 sticker on it forever for like all eternity. But that is Pac-Man World Repack and it's actually a really good platformer. This is really fun. Um, kind of a mix of 2D, 3D platforming and it's really solid. There are some hard levels in this where I was like almost going to throw the switch at the wall because I was like, holy shit, I'm... I don't want to play this level anymore, but it was like, that's good. I like getting angry in a good platformer because I feel like there's a challenge there and it's fun. I, I, I always talk about playing games on easy, but I really do truly like um, a challenge with platforming. I just don't really want a challenge in JRPGs. That's all. I just, those to me are like comforting and I like getting through a story and meeting people and going through towns and adventuring. But like, yeah, I want Donkey Kong to kick my ass. Like I do, seriously, I want a nice challenge there. It's fun. Um, so yeah, this is really good. I recommend it like actually a lot. It was really, really fun. Does not take that long. I'm sure if you sat down and really like dove into it, like, I don't know, four or five hours, like it's pretty good. It's just a really, really good platformer, probably really cheap. And uh, I just really recommend it. Next, we have a game that is one of my favorite games ever now. So shocking. I just thought, eh, I'll give it a shot. And that's Sakura Wars. And oh my God, this game is like really, 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 really good. It's so much. It was everything I wanted. It was basically like the ultimate anime experience for me. Like super goofy in, in a way that, you know, how Yakuza Like a Dragon is really silly and goofy. And this was really silly. It was kind of... It had like goofy vibes mixed with like Sailor Moon because there were some scenes in this like, like I was legitimately like excited like I was like smiling playing it like my I was beaming and like I don't usually beam when I play games but I was legit beaming when I played this and it was so fun I just loved it and it's a weird like it's supposed to be in like 1940s Tokyo there's mechs it's a little bit of a dating sim kind of a weird concept but I just loved it and you don't have to be you know you don't you can be a dude and play this game and have a great time because it's so much fun i don't know i i really i really like this and it was such a shocker anytime like mechs would come and you'd be like kicking people's ass and it was so fun and then you'd like have this like <laughs> emotional scene um you know because you're like falling in love with this character and then there'd be like a wacky transformation scene. Like it was just ridiculous. It was so anime in the most fun 90s way. Highly recommend, just a fun game. Next we have Omori. And uh, as you know, I am a major Earthbound fan. So I figured I have to play Omori because everybody says it's like an Earthbound and it is and isn't. Um, very, very different from Earthbound in terms of like story. Uh, Earthbound is like pretty much all modern day going from town to town. This is not that. There's like a modern day world and there's sort of like a like a dream world going on. And they're both really cool, but they're both wacky and zany and 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 very much, you know, everything from the way the battles look to the text, like it's very Earthbound inspired. And yes, if you like Earthbound, you probably will like this. It's a really cool JRPG. It's very, very dark and deals with some very triggering topics. Um, so just a heads up on that, because I know like there are probably a lot of people who would be very turned off and upset by playing it because it dives into some stuff that just not for everybody. Um, now, though, there are topics in here, though, that don't resonate with me. Like, I don't have experience with them. I don't have, like, they're not triggering for me so to say. So I didn't like, I wasn't like, 
deeply impacted by it so it didn't affect me that much and I was kind of like yeah like it just some people are like oh my god the story is profound I'm gonna think about it forever like no not really for me not so much but um definitely a cool game I'll give it that it was a cool game but it's not a favorite unfortunately so because I beat Xenoblade Chronicles 2 I figured eh, let's do Torna because it is um a prequel to Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Here's the deal. I thought this was just awful. <laughs> I just hated it. It starts out really cool. I'm like, yeah, I love this world. I love Xenoblade Chronicles 2. It was really fun. This was so boring. Um, basically, like, it's okay. It's fun. Blah, blah, blah. But there's a huge aspect here where there are side quests. There are side quests in all the other Xenoblade Chronicles, but you have to do them. So they're not really side quests then. They're mandatory, annoying quests that you have to do. Hi, I left a piece of bread in another country. Can you get that for me? Are you serious? Like, stuff like that where you're like, okay, what is this? Like, why am I having to do a hundred mandatory side quests? Not cool. So I was really not pleased with this. Um kind of a slog and I was getting mad, but I had to beat it for my own sense of pride. But I'm not a huge fan of this and I'm disappointed because I've heard a lot of really great things about it. But yeah, no, it's a big no for me. And finally, I beat Stray on the PS5, my first PS5 game that I got. This is a short game. I think it's like six hours or something. And oh my God, very cool. Visually, very neat, uh, very cool world, uh, very very colorful neon dy like a dystopia but with neon colors and robots and that Blade Runner kind of vibe very cool you're this cat and uh, so very cool platforming like you can climb up walls and you know get to different places and if you were say like a person so it was just really interesting I was really like wanting to know like what is the deal here like what's happening what happened to this world why are there no people left what's going on very cool. Like, just a really neat game. And actually, a solid soundtrack, believe it or not. This is just a really cool game. Uh, honestly, it's one of my favorite games that released in 2022. It's very, very good. So, definitely check this out. Don't miss it. Like, do not skip out on Stray. It's not that long, too. So, like, not a huge commitment and a great time. So, those are all the games that I beat in 2022. I will do a very... Uh, brief follow-up to this video to show you my top 10 games played in 2022. I'm sure you can pick out which ones are not going to be in that list, but you know, you, you, you get the idea, but a yeah, solid year. Uh, yeah, a few that I wasn't so keen on, but then there are some games that are like forever, like just phenomenal. I'll think about them always. So great year, 20 games beat. I'm very proud of myself and yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.